Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 94. Do you believe it? 94. That's of crazy, Snack man. Minute. It's crazy. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool projects that we work on. And the cool thing that we're going to talk to you about today is Code Whisperer with my buddy, Stuart Clark. Stu, um, do you mind introducing yourself? Hey, buddy. Thank you, Kareem. Wow, it is really great to be back here with you. Uh, really looking forward to being here with you today. So I'm Stuart Clark. I'm a senior developer advocate with AWS. Your buddy. He's my buddy. <laughs> He's our buddy. I'm everybody's buddy. Uh, Stuart, uh, it's it, it's great to have you. Um, you know, uh, we heard this thing about Code Whisperer, but we're not, you know, not not working for AWS. We're not super uh, super privy to all the information. So, can you give us a rundown of what it is and and how it can help me out? Great. So Code Whisper is machine learning powered service. It basically helps developers improve productivity by generating code recommendations, which is based on developers' prior code um, commits and, and comments. So the great thing about Code Whisper is, is that it enables developers to um, write a comment that are, are outlines their specific tasks. And you can do this in interesting plain English, such as um, upload a file with server-side encryption. And by putting that comment into your, into your IDE, Code Whisper will automatically determine which cloud service or public libraries are going to be best suited for the specific task that you're actually going to be writing. What it will then do is it will recommend um, code snippets directly into your IDE, and you can accept the top recommendations, or you can view more recommendations, or you can just continue writing code on your own. Does it actually bring in like your your connection strings as well? Like if if I have a configuration file somewhere? Yeah, absolutely. So it'll bring this in. And what it does is when it automatically analyzing comments, it can determine a lot of other things as well, like which cloud services, which public libraries are going to be suited to, to, to that task. Because Cloud Whisper is actually trained on ML models of various data sources, one of which includes Amazon and open source code, it means that you, know, you can look at those recommendations or you know, just, just continue doing your own thing. I'm assuming since you have um, your IDE up and running here, you're going to show us how it actually works. The great thing about Code Whisper is as well, it supports um, sort of multiple IDEs. So you can use JetBrains, Visual Studio Code. You can even use AWS Cloud9. Um, you can integrate it into AWS Lambda Console. Um, currently, the support is for um, Java, JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, and also C as well. Um, so we can do a little bit of demo. And I've been using this. This is part of the, you can see here on the left-hand side of my um, uh, Visual Studio Code, that I've got the AWS um, basically developer tools in here. So I've got this pre-installed. And you can see that Code Whisperer is, is, is up and running here. And there's a little check mark at the bottom to say this is enabled. If I expand on this, you can see that I can actually pause it. I can run security scans, which we can look at in a second. And you can open this thing called um, code reference as well, which we can we can talk about a little bit in a minute, which is which is super cool. Okay. So seeing as this is, you know, all about Cisco, I want to show that, you know, that this is just more than, you know, being able to use this with a cloud service or CDK. So let's take a common sort of example and do something, you know, which is a little bit sort of network automation focused, just for a demo to show how powerful this can really run. So say, for example, I want to run um, something like um, uh, a RESTConf call with a Yang model. I'm unsure how to do it. So let's just paste in a couple of things just to start with, just some basic information. So if we import just the Python libraries that we're going to use, so typical ones that we use, uh, request, uh, requests, JSON, and, and, and sys. Then we'll specify our host, like you said. Let's just use the sandbox and the port, and then the username, username and password. But what I want to actually do now is this is the bit where I'm, you know, a little bit kind of unsure. So I create like a comment, like you would when you're writing um, Python code. And excuse me, I'm going to look to my left because I'm using my monitor on the left hand side. So if I put Quite simply, right, and you can see it's asking me to, it's already trying to do some auto completion now as well for me because it's trying to get ahead. But what I want to do is I want to write a main function, okay, 
using oops restconf with yang model to show the status of um device say uh oh, put an s in there by accident hold on device interfaces uh, and then after i've done that i want to print the results oops can't spell results in json okay and then after i've done that i just hit return and now what will happen is code whisper will have a little think about this for a second and hopefully the demo gods are with me <laughs> well we could see as it was as you were typing it in it was trying to guess some things that i mean made sense to guess for sure so it's come up with this and you can just see it highlighted in gray and now what i can do is i can just press the tab here and then i press return and then it will put out a block of code and if i like this piece of code ah! I can turn this was supposed to return. So this is really, really cool. And then so to get this to work, um, what I would obviously need to do here, then I would need to call uh, the function, and it's already trying to guess already ahead of me, call the function main um, and exit. How do I want to do this? So I want to exit giving the, uh, let's do the return code. Return code, that is the, oops, I've spelled return wrong there. Come on, get it together, Stuart. And it's come nervous around Kareem. Return code. <laughs> Hold on, there you go. Go to the end of that. That is the, uh, let's see, return the result. So that'll be the re, uh, result of main. That's what we want to do. So it's fairly simple. So it asked me to complete. Oops, hold on. I made a mistake there. Yeah, press tab and then tab again. There we go. And so if I just save that, just simply just save that file. And so we can see what we've done. It's automatically given us the Yang model to do this. It's appended the host and port. But obviously the real test now is, you know, is this going to work? Does it run? So let's open a new does it run that's exactly so i need to just go into source bin um activate uh okay and then i save that in downloads whoops i feel i feel like uh, we okay. need to get um, the the dmx uh meme where it says we've automated your script to automate <laughs> <laughs> well the nice thing about uh, this i mean it's it's very obvious is that we're documenting our code while writing it, which is, you know, it, yeah. as a developer, mm -hmm. we all know we write the code and then we document it later in bad habits. Yeah. And this is actually forcing a really good habit. And the other thing we didn't have to do is we didn't have to look up the endpoint for right. the rest no. of URL, which is always a pain in the no. butt. <laughs> no. And you can totally use this as well, because normally, Normally, you'd scour the internet looking for, you know, code samples. You might even check out code exchange for those things as well. So let's see if this runs. And so it did. We get a complete run here. So it, it prints out all of everything. First of all, if you go back to your um, to your code whisper .py, does it? Um, yeah. If I were to go back to the comment and say. Uh, in main, add, also add a line to log to a file. Would it actually go in and do that? Like you see line 18 where you say call function main and exit giving the return in the result main. Yep. And add, now it'd say and add a log or output to log file, log.txt or something. Output to log txt. We can try that. Oh, there you go. It's completed it. Is it going to actually just remove the code this. and go back and fix it? Yeah, so I'll delete that. Yeah, so I'll delete that. Let's see. Are we doing this live? No idea. Let's let's check it out. Is it going to do it? It's going to have a think about it, I think. Mm. 
If it's got an example to do that and log the text, log output to text file, maybe I've not typed that in correctly. Maybe we need to tell them better instructions, yeah. The, and yeah. then the second question that I wanted to find out is, so how do I know, first of all, how, where, how do you run this? Like, where do you get this? How do you, how does your IDE know that you have Code Whisperer running? Is it an well, extension? Showed, you showed that earlier, oh. yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's here, look, in the, in the AWS toolkit, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Right there in the AWS toolkit, and it's right here. And so while we're in that, let's let's take a look at that, because that's a great question. So while we're in here, we can actually run a security scan as well on the code here. And you can see our, our whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff. And it's running a security scan now on my code. And this is obviously something that's very important. When we're writing our code, we want our code to be secure and in the best possible, best possible place. And so what it's done is it's actually come up with um, a bunch of things here. I've got a spell check in here, so it's actually flagging me for my inadequate spelling, which is, you know, pretty normal. But it says here that we have improper uh, certification validation, lack of validation or insufficient validation of security. And it, it will tell us that this here is on line 15. So we can scoot down here and it basically then flags this up and says, you know, you might want to look at you might want to look at this. There's another piece which is also in here as well. Let me just do this. We've got something called the um, cloud, uh, sorry, the code whisperer reference log as well. So this is like a reference tracker. And what it will do is code whisperer will, uh, the tracker will detect whether code, a code recommendation might be similar to something where code whisperer is training data on and it will provide those references for you. And then you'll be easily able to find that and review that reference code and see how it's used in the context of another project. So if you're importing something into here and there's you know, maybe something like a security risk around something that you're importing here, this will also get flagged as well in here and it will actually link you to that reference as well. So you can find that out as well. And all of this is open source, free. I can just go grab it and get starting with it. Get started yep. with it today. Yeah, absolutely. So the great thing is that the developers own the code. You're responsible for it. Code Whisper. Uh, the code is generated and um, powered by ML models trained on various data sources, including Amazon and open source. Um, you can get it. Yep, completely run. And during the um, preview period, developers can use Code Whisper at completely no cost as well. Interestingly, as well as we mentioned before, that you know you can use it on AWS services such as Cloud9 and within Lambda. Um, so this is also then region agnostic. So it's available to developers completely worldwide within you know AWS as well. I'm excited about this. I think I'm yeah, going to go really actually cool. just go get it now today. I have a <laughs> bunch of projects that I'm yeah. working on, so this is going to be useful. Stuart, unfortunately, we are out of time, so we have to let you go. Um, but thank you for joining us yet again. Welcome back. And uh, Snackers, uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, Stu.